Usually I do a little bit shorter, but it don't matter. It doesn't matter. Kamawanai. So you say it in Japanese, doesn't matter. Kamawanai. Kamaimasen. So, uni cream pasta. Uni cream pasta. One of my favorite pasta dishes. What's going on? Pat here at All Day Like a Shark, where I share my Japanese recipe videos once a week, showing you how to cook Japanese food. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Today, I have a very delicious dish to share with you. It's going to be a favorite pasta of mine. Also, one of the easier pasta dishes that you can make, Japanese style. And basically, what it is, is uni pasta. So I'm going to do a few things differently than I, I usually do. And that's going to make it a little bit more complex, a little bit more flavor, and a little bit more different and delicious in its own unique way. If you are new here, make sure you stay till the end of the video to hear six or seven of my tips for making this pasta, as well as other pastas, a success. So all of my ingredients here are ready to go. I have some nori here, which we're going to be cutting up into little strips. I just toasted this on the stove with some open flame. I have some shiokoji, which we're going to use for umami. I have some anchovy fillets. I have a little bit of butter. I have a little bit of cream. I have a pound, just over a pound of chitara. This is different from spaghetti. We're going to be using a chitara. This is actually like a square shaped pasta. I have my water boiling, just about boiling. I'm going to turn on the heat right there again. I have some kaiwara daikon, some uni. This is about 80 grams worth of uni. I have some ikura, which is salmon roe salmon eggs and green onions, two cloves of garlic, so some really fat cloves, oops, one little tomato, as well as two tablespoons of sake. First thing that we're gonna do is get our pasta started. It's gonna take about nine minutes roughly here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. We're just gonna do about half a pound. I'm just gonna eyeball this. So that was just about half. Go ahead and get that uh, boiled in this salted water. Always salt your pasta water. I used to never do it for health reasons. I was trying to avoid eating excess salt because I have a history of uh, high blood pressure in my family. So I try not to eat as much salt as I used to. It really affects the flavor of your pasta. So highly recommend that you do salt your water. And also I'm using my favorite brand, Rusticella de Abruzzo. It's from Italy, Tuscany specifically. And it's some of the best pasta, dried pasta that I found. Highly recommend that you check this out. If you haven't uh, seen it already, they make all kinds of different shapes. It's available on Amazon. So while that's going, it's gonna take about eight minutes. We're gonna go ahead and prepare the sauce. So I'm gonna use my big saucepan here. And we're gonna put in the garlic, crushed garlic with a little bit of butter. And as soon as that gets a little bit aromatic, we're gonna go ahead, actually, I'm not gonna put it in there just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and crush the garlic into this little thing first. There's two cloves, roughly a tablespoon's worth. And then we're gonna use about a tablespoon of butter. We'll get that going. So put this on medium heat and we're gonna use a tablespoon of butter right here, unsalted butter, drop that in there. And all of the garlic. As soon as this starts to get nice and fragrant, we can go ahead and put in all of the tomatoes. I'm just gonna get this in here right now. Sometimes I actually like to put in a handful of green onions and cook it together with the garlic, but we're gonna keep it separate today. And we're gonna top it with the kaiwara daikon, the green onions, and then a little bit of ikura, also the nori too. This is dried seaweed in case you're wondering. We go ahead and get this sauteed. Make sure that spaghetti is cooking evenly. For today's sauce, what we're gonna do is cook it until just before it's al dente because we're gonna finish it in this pan. We're gonna use one anchovy filet. This have, helps to add additional flavor as well as some shiokoji rather than salt. I'm just gonna chop this up very coarsely. And once we put the tomatoes in, we're gonna wanna make sure that we crush them. You can also use pureed tomatoes. There's the anchovy, helps to give it plenty of flavor. So next thing we're gonna do is add in the tomatoes. Turn down the heat to a medium and try to break up all of the tomato pieces into small bits. I like it a little bit chunky every now and then. Sometimes I'll puree it. Today I feel like a little bit of chunky tomatoes in my pasta. So for this, we're gonna use about three quarters of a cup. This is uh, just heavy cream. And as soon as the oil and butter appear to have been absorbed or taken up by the tomatoes, that's when you add in the cream. So about uh, 45 seconds to a minute. Go ahead and add that in there. And then we're also gonna put in half of the uni. So you could put all of it in if you uh, don't really care about topping your pasta. That way it's all interspersed. But today we're just gonna put all of it in. And then make sure to break up those little bits as well. And then next we're gonna put in a drop, a couple drops of shiokoji. This helps to add a little bit of umami kick. I'll put in about a half teaspoon's worth and let that get mixed in here. And then put a little bit of cracked pepper. That helps to add a little bit of flavor. 
and that is everything. So now all we're gonna do is cook this for about five to 10 minutes and let the uh, tomato juices get immersed with the sauce. If you wanna see what this looks like right now, there's still a few chunks of tomato and there's a few chunks of the uh, uni as well. And uh, you can smell it, it's very creamy, just like the uni pasta should be. And go ahead and check on our, I think it's been about five minutes for this chitara. Make sure that uh, none of it is sticking together. That's one of the worst things you can do with the pasta is when it sticks together and you get chunks. Meanwhile, we can go ahead and prepare our nori. We're gonna cut this into little strips. This is just sushi hane nori, which means that it has holes and it's used for tamaki zushi, for example. You can also do onigiri. You can uh, use this just like any other nori, but the uh, holes in the nori help to give it additional flavor. So and if your sauce starts to boil, just turn on the heat and put it onto a simmer. You don't need to boil your cream sauce. And I'm just breaking up these tomato bits. While that's going, we can go ahead and prepare our toasted nori. Always toast your nori, by the way, because it helps to enhance the flavor as well as the texture. And we'll cut it into very thin strips. So it's just a matter of preference. If you like to have your nori cut into big pieces or little strips, it doesn't really matter. It's just for, uh, I guess, garnish. I'm gonna do long strips today. I don't make this as much as I would like to because it is quite rich. You can see it. we put a cup of cream as well as some butter. And then we're actually gonna finish this with some extra virgin olive oil. That'll help to give it another dimension of flavor and a little bit of a spicy kick, peppery kick from the uh, olive oil. All right, so I think it's been just about eight minutes. I'm gonna check on the pasta, see if it's just before al dente. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drain it in the sink and then we'll finish it in the uh, sauce pan right here. So if you like your sauce a little bit on the sauc saucier side, you can definitely save some of the pasta water, but I think we have plenty of cream already today, so I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna dump all of this in, so this is about uh, 250 grams worth. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this all in. As soon as the uh, sauce is incorporated, it's really ready to eat. Very easy recipe to put together. Most restaurants charge a ton for this dish, and I paid $40, $40 for a pasta dish. You're definitely gonna be uh, hurting in your wallet if you uh, don't make this at home. All we're gonna do now is we're gonna serve it. We're gonna top it with some of the uh, green onions, the kaiwara daikon, the uh, ikra, and I actually forgot to put in the sake. Oops, totally forgot to put in the sake. All right, we're, we're gonna go ahead and mix it in anyway right now. We're gonna cook it a little bit longer. It's probably gonna be overcooked a little bit. It definitely adds a uh, boost to the umami flavor. So I'm just gonna keep this in here and let it cook until the alcohol flavor is gone and then we'll serve it. So I actually preheated my plate in the oven. You know, like in restaurants where they give you a nice warm plate, so you not to touch it because it's hot. And as soon as this is done, a little bit of alcohol flavor in there, so we'll give that a minute. We can prepare some of our garnishes. And for the uni, so question of the day, have you ever had sea urchin before? If you have, let me know in the comments. What do you like to uh, eat it with? I know it's not everybody's favorite. It's got a uh, unique flavor. And if you've never had fresh sea urchin, fresh sea urchin, like straight out of the shell, is a little bit sweet. I think it's just about done. I'm gonna try using my serving fork to make this a little bit of a better presentation than I usually do. I have a difficulty with pasta and making it look good, so I thought I would give this a try today. Make it look like it's going in one direction. Some other ideas for garnishes for uni pasta, you could use shiso. You can also use soy sauce, shoyu, instead of shiokoji or salt. That looks pretty decent. And put a couple chunks of the uni right in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the uh, green onions on the side. Don't need to put too much on there. Next, we'll put on a little bit of uh, kaiwara daikon. These are radish sprouts. We'll grab some few pieces of uni and then we can, actually we'll put on the ikura first. This is probably almost a tablespoon. So put that on there. And then we'll also put a couple pieces of uni. There's one, two, all right guys, so here is my uni pasta. Almost messed it up by forgetting the sake, but I think we recovered there at the very end. Very easy to dish, dish to put together and tastes very rich. Forgot to put on the nori. I'll just put on a few pieces here and there, and then this is ready to serve. All right guys, there it is. I guess some of my tips for making this uni pasta a success is like I mentioned, one would be to make sure that you're using salted water for your pasta. Make sure to cook it until just before al dente. Like I said, we were gonna finish the pasta in the sauce, so it's gonna continue cooking. It's also gonna absorb the sauce. The third tip would be to use a good dried pasta. Like I mentioned, one of my favorite brands is this Rusticella de Bruza. 
You can get it on Amazon, it's from Italy. Don't use that cheap 99 cent stuff. I used to use it all the time, but it makes a big difference if you're using good quality pasta like we are with that brand. So for the flavor, this would be the fourth tip, the flavor. Make sure you use some daikon radish for some aromatic or pungent flavors, as well as some green onions. You can also add for another dimension of flavor, ikura or salmon roe. So the fifth tip is to use anchovy for another layer of flavor. If you don't have sake or rice wine, you can also use white wine. Just use two tablespoons worth. That's what we did today. For the nori or the dried seaweed, I think this is tip number six. Make sure that you toast it first or you just put it over an open flame and go back and forth really quickly. It does burn easily. So you'll know because it doesn't smell good. It smells like burning hair. So just go back and forth until it gets nice and toasted and then cut it into little strips. Always add a freshly cracked black pepper. Freshly cracked black pepper is one of the uh, easiest things a new cook couldn't do to improve their dishes because freshly cracked pepper is just so much more flavorful than the stuff that's pre-ground. You can also finish this pasta with a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil, which we're gonna do right now. Extra virgin olive oil also has its own peppery kick, so make sure that you use a decent quality one, ideally from Italy and ideally not a blend. Usually the blends I haven't found have too much flavor. Just gonna put some on here, like a zigzag. You don't need to put too much. All right. Cannot wait to eat this. If you would like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. This is actually gonna be the second in a series of Japanese pasta recipes, so stay tuned. I think the next episode is gonna be with mentaiko pasta. Stay tuned for that next week. All right guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in my next video. See you later. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste. Get a nice chunk of uh, uni right there and some ikura, some kaiware, some green onion. And I'll put a little bit, in, a little bit more nori. Mm. That is happiness on a plate. Really good.